Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are gonna make an eggless chaffle. Now, this is not just a chaffle for people that don't like the eggy taste in chaffle. If you're one of those folks, I'm gonna link right up here to my chaffle for chaffle haters video. That's the one for you. This is for people who actually have egg allergies and are willing to go to a little bit of extra effort to make a chaffle. And there is a little bit of extra effort in this. But before we begin, just a quick shout out to Mike Palmer and Accolade Prince. Mike sent me this t-shirt right here, Get Up and Go with Keto. Mike has a number of designs out on his Redbubble store that are pretty slick. And I will link to that down below. I don't get any commission on this, but show him some love anyway. The eggless chaffle has been a challenge for me. The big challenge when cooking with neither eggs nor gluten is you're lacking two of the things that give structure to any sort of a baked good. You have the protein in the egg that we're missing, and then there's the gluten in flour, which we're missing. I went through a number of different egg substitutions. I tried out other people's recipes without success, and it took a while. There were a lot of failed chaffles to get to this. So before you ask, can I substitute this for that, or why are you using such and such an ingredient, I'll explain along the way why I'm using certain ingredients, and I'll tell you that any substitution you make, you make at your own risk. It took me a while to hone this. The recipe is what the recipe is. So I found an interesting article out on Food52 on different baking substitutes you can use for eggs. I think, though, most of them assume that you're going to be using flour, and I tried them all. The one that came closest to success and that I was able to build off of was aquafaba the mucousy like liquid that you find in a can of chickpeas. So let me answer your first question. What am I going to do with those chickpeas? I'm keto. I can't eat those. Fortunately for me, I have a non-keto family that enjoys hummus. So they have been on the receiving end of a lot of cans of chickpeas over the last few weeks. There's been no shortage of hummus. Alternatively, if you've got no one to give some chickpeas to and you garden, throw these into your composter. These will compost nicely. I also experimented with lots of different alternative flours and protein and ratios before I came up with what I came up with. And what I felt I came up with provides the necessary structure and density for a chaffle. So many of the recipes I tried, I basically wound up creating a whole bunch of air in the center and burnt cheese on the top and bottom. Two of the ingredients that I used to hold together the structure and density of this chaffle are xanthan gum, but I found that the quantity necessary to use since I didn't have egg was going to create sort of that slimy feel that sometimes you can get in your mouth with too much xanthan gum. So to get the additional density and structure that I wanted, I had to rely on another ingredient slash recipe called pixie dust. Now, I'm not going to create a separate section of this video or probably even its own video to show you how to make this, but pixie dust is basically a ratio of flaxseed, chia seed, and psyllium husk powder that you then grind up in a spice grinder. So you'll take 20 grams of golden flaxseed, 10 grams of chia seeds, and 5 grams of psyllium husk powder. Run that through a spice grinder, put it into an airtight container. This becomes your non-xanthan gum thickener. So enough with the preamble, let's get to making these things. For this recipe, we'll be using the food processor method, my standard whenever I've got wet and dry ingredients, especially mozzarella. We'll start with two tablespoons of almond flour, one tablespoon of coconut flour, one tablespoon of whey protein powder, and you can use a flavored powder like the Quest Cinnamon Crunch, which I find makes a wonderful waffle. Or if you plan on making a savory waffle by adding, say, garlic or everything but the bagel seasoning, you can just use unflavored whey protein. Or if you want any flavor, honestly. Vanilla works, but I'm using the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Then we'll have one teaspoon of pixie dust. One teaspoon. One quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum. And one quarter cup of shredded mozzarella cheese. If you're wondering why we have so many of these dry ingredients, we really need them to soak up all the juice from our aquafaba. Otherwise, this batter as it heats winds up gushing out of your mini dash and it looks horrible and it's awful to clean up. So we're going to process this until it's like breadcrumbs. I 
I find about eight pulses is the magic number. Then we're gonna add our Aquafaba. Now this can be a bit of a wild card. I've had cans of the exact same brand where I get a half a cup of liquid and it's very runny. I've had others where I get a quarter cup and it's really thick. We're gonna use one quarter cup. And I would say that this is somewhere between runny and thick. Hopefully this is Goldilocks. Process this into a fairly smooth batter. At this point, it might smell a little bit funny to you. It might have sort of a sulfury smell. Don't panic, it'll all work out. Now it's time to preheat our Dash Mini. We're gonna divide the batter between two Dash Minis. It doesn't look like a lot of batter and it's very thick, but trust me, this is gonna expand. We also wanna make sure that we put our batter fairly near the back of our Dash Mini because it's gonna expand forward. Do your best to get it in a ball shape. Press down the lid and hold down the lid for probably five seconds or so. That'll force the batter to expand outward. When we're down to just a little bit of steam coming out, these guys are ready to go to a cooling rack. Look at that. This one I overfilled slightly and probably let it cook just a smidge too long. Then add the non-sugar syrup of your choice and we'll give it a taste. I don't want to stop. Trying to make this recipe almost broke my spirit. So it is so rewarding for me right now to taste this and to be tasting something that tastes like a waffle. Is it more work than your standard chaffle? Yes, no doubt about it. But if you have a child that has egg allergies and she's making you know, sad puppy eyes at you whenever she sees you eating a chaffle, it's worth the effort. So I'm not gonna make this sort of a standard thing where I'm doing special food just for people with allergies, but this is one of those occasions where I got a special request and it felt like the right thing to do. Thanks for watching.